Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is part two of the Explorer Notes for Diana Alterers on Extinction. If you haven't already caught up with part one, I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner, but essentially this is where the story ends. Those of you who are more familiar with the lore of Ark will know that I'm still yet to recite the words from the one who waits, and I will be doing another two-part episode on that note read-through, so why not consider subscribing if you haven't already done so, so you don't miss out. But this is where the story ends for the original survivors, and any information that we obtain from the one who waits, or even if we look at the Genesis simulation and look into the words of HLNA or Rockwell in the form of the glitches, all of that information happens an indetermined amount of time after the original survivors. So even though there is still quite a lot of information that we will uncover, this is essentially where the original survivor notes end. You will notice in the final pages as well, Diana mentions Arat Prime. That's quite important moving forward as we all know now. But I will elaborate a little bit more on that at the end of this episode. Last time we caught up with Diana, she had in fact made contact with Mei Ying and the pair of them had managed to get their mechs repaired. So sit back, relax and enjoy part two of the notes from Diana Alteris on Extinction. I think I can see where we're being led. I can't make out all the details yet, but there's a bunch of communication arrays that stand out against the horizon. Could be military, like a command post or major communications relay. Whatever force is guiding us along bought itself a lot of trust by reuniting me with Mei Ying. But now that our destination is within reach, I'm starting to get curious. What does it want us to do when we get there? Are there other survivors that we can contact with those arrays? For once, I'm not getting a response to my questions. Maybe we're supposed to find out by ourselves. Or maybe we should go in there with our safeties off. Structurally, this building is basically a bunker. The walls look durable enough to withstand a few dozen megatons of force. And they're built to last. That alone told me it was important, but it was nothing compared to the sprawling circular control centre we found inside. Rows of consoles cascade from out the middle of the room. And the walls are lined with massive screens. While everything here is wearing a fine coat of dust, I see lights flashing and status reports flowing. This entire facility is still operational, and it's the heart of everything we've been through. The space stations we were on are all being monitored right here. Guess I know what we're here for now. Better roll up my sleeves. This is going to be a ton of data to sort through. May says Helena called the space stations arcs, and they were meant to restore life to the planet. That's consistent with what I've found here, but there's a problem. The reseed protocol, the final step of the restoration process, is being blocked by what it calls element toxicity rating. Now that I think about it, there's a ton of element veins out there, way more than I remember. It must have spread across the whole planet. Based on these readings, it's even affected the lower layers of its crust. After witnessing what raw element can do to a living thing at first hand, I can see how that would be a problem. It looks like the Arcs have some built-in tech to reduce the ETR around them once they make landfall, but right now it's just too high for them to handle. Something's spreading it and protecting it to boot. Those big monsters out there, they're the problem, the Titans. These Titans remind me of combat drones. This control center has tracked their general migration patterns, and to my eye, they're almost like troop movements. When they decide to swarm something, they come from all over, like something's commanding them not to mention the spread of element everywhere they go. So basically, before the reseed protocol can be triggered, the Titans need to be eliminated. Normally I'd go all gun-ho about an impossible mission like that, but the number of Titans we'd have to take down is nuts. May and I might be a killer power couple, if I do say so myself, but even we'd die of old age before we even made a dent in their population. There must be something we can do though. I did find references to a place called Arat Prime, off on the other side of the planet. Looks promising, but, well now isn't that interesting? Our favourite mystery being seems to think so too. Is that where it's leading us? Now that we know what the faceless tour guide in the sky actually wants from us, May and I had a long talk about next steps. On one hand, after going through the ringer, it's awfully tempting to settle down and just enjoy the apocalypse together. On the other hand, I've got a resurrection to repay, and keeping Earth from dying seems kind of important. I do live here after all. Who am I kidding? I was always voting for the dangerous option. As for Mei Yin, I guess she's actually been hearing said guide herself these days. 
and amazingly that's all the convincing it took. She says she trusts the way it speaks, almost like it's familiar to her. We must be out of our freaking minds to do this, but hey, at least we're going mad together. Things have taken a bit of a turn, or rather we've taken one, in the exact opposite direction of that absurdly huge lizard we spotted. As big as those other titans are, they're puny compared to this guy, and according to Mei Ying he packs a punch to match. She would know, she fought it before, when it killed all my other friends. While that means I owe him some retribution, it also means we're seriously outgunned. Unfortunately, he keeps following us even when we change course, like he's got our scent. He's still a day or two behind us, but eventually he'll catch up. And when he does, we'll have to have an escape plan, because barring a serious upgrade in firepower, wait, maybe we have that after all. This is an all out or nothing gamble. If we can't repair the last two mechs that got left behind the last time this King of Titans came out to play, then we're just going to die where everyone else did. But if we can get them up and running somehow, then we can fuse all four of them and form Santiago's super weapon. With the damage these two mechs have sustained and only two pilots, it won't be at full capacity. But lucky for us, I'm the top ace in the whole damn URE. As long as the engine's running and the guns are loaded, I can give us a chance. Okay, break's over. From here on, we're heading towards the battlefield at full burn. I'd been bracing myself for this ever since we'd set out, but the sight of decaying corpses and shattered equipment was still hard to take. I knew everyone here for years. They were basically my new family. Pulling Kazuma out from beneath his mech just about triggered the waterworks. I can't mourn yet though, there's no time, and I don't want to give May more reasons to blame herself. What happened here wasn't her fault. She made the right call. If she'd have thrown her life away instead of escaping when she had the chance, we wouldn't have a shot at payback at all. So for now, we're going to have to put the blinders on and keep each other focused. Shit, it sounds so easy when you write it down. Yes, hell yeah. They actually started. They're still pretty banged up, even with the repairs, but both the abandoned mechs are operational. Now we've just got to fuse all four of them together. We've got time to spare too. Our guest of honour is still a ways off. He's slowly lumbering towards us, like it's inevitable that we're going to roll over and die for him. Well guess what, asshole? The only thing that's going to roll here is that nasty looking head of yours. Man, my blood is pumping just thinking about it. But I'd better rein it in. When that thing gets here, I'm going to need every ounce of adrenaline I've got. Santiago, you crazy little genius, I owe you another kiss. This baby's beautiful. I've never seen a weapon like it. The mechs fuse so completely that it's as if they were never separated at all. And the power this combined mega mech is packing is off the charts. Even though it's only at 70% capacity, it should be enough to take the Titan down. That sword looks like it can cut a skyscraper in half. And its defense systems can take a serious beating. The only tricky part is the fact that it needs four pilots. And we only have two. The good news, one of those pilots is me. Okay, it's done. I've managed to slave the legs, head and arm to my controls. May's better than me at hand to hand, so she'll pilot the sword arm. But anything more than that would overwhelm her with information and technological complexity. In other words, when we enter combat, I'm going to assume control of 75% of the Mega Mech systems. It'll be a mental and physical strain, but I'm prepared to take it. Like I said, it's my turn to carry the load. And I'm in my wheelhouse here. If there's anyone who can handle this, it's me. Not like there's time for another plan anyway. The Titan's almost here. Alright, you ugly son of a bitch. Let's go. The Titan's initial assault was intense, but we fended it off by staying on the defense. Something that powerful would be used to winning quickly. So we knew that if we could weather the first storm, it was sure to hesitate. When that moment came, we turned up the heat. From there on, it was a high octane slugfest. Our clashes felt like they might shatter the ground beneath us until we finally landed a critical blow to its torso. Based on the way it flailed and hissed when we struck, I don't think it had ever been wounded so badly. So in the end, that was enough to send it packing, nursing the giant bloody X that we carved into its chest. Take that, arsehole. Don't come back. Hopefully that's the last we see of that time, because as sweet as some more permanent revenge would be, fighting it a second time might be pushing our luck. By the time I exited the cockpit, my nose was bleeding, and hours later I'm still wobbly on my feet. Controlling three mechs at once in a sustained combat scenario should definitely be filed under, don't try this at home. 
and trying to pilot all four is probably a fast track to an aneurysm. On top of that, our mega mech is basically held together by bubble gum and dreams at this point. At full power and with four pilots, it might be able to kill that big bastard, but we're lacking on both fronts. So all told, we did as well as we could have hoped. Think I deserve a victory nap. We finished making the last of the graves a few hours ago. It was hard to say goodbye, but having recently died myself, I know that sitting here crying my eyes out for a week straight won't help them. Hopefully they find peace within that void, or something better beyond it. Now it's just me, Mei Ying and the long road ahead. Well, and the faceless presence that's guiding us down that road of course. I've already started to feel the tugs pulling me towards Arat Prime. Not sure what's waiting for us there, but with Mei by my side and a dangerous mission in front of us, I'm going to relax and enjoy the ride. I can admit that I'm certifiable for saying so, but this kind of a life, it's just my speed. Mission Log, First Lieutenant Diana Alteres, URE 82nd Fighter Squadron, and Li Mei Yin of Yi, Beast Queen of the Jungle, the Depths and the Wastes. If you're reading this, then like us, you've managed to break free of the arcs. So welcome to Earth, kid. Hope you like ravaged hellscapes because the bad news is you're late to the apocalypse. The good news is there's something you can do about it. The two of us are going to do what we can to help, but it won't be enough. You see those huge ugly monsters out there? They need to be cleared out or Earth can't recover. Also, if you see one with an X-shaped scar on its chest, do me a favour and flip it off before you finish it. We'll do our part. The rest is up to you. Good luck. And that concludes the notes from Diana Alteras on Extinction. I will of course be continuing with the notes from The One Who Waits, but I just wanted to come out to this area in the wastelands. Now, I think this is where Diana and Mei Ying were talking about when they discovered the main control center. And even though there's no consoles or anything left here now, I think this is where they discovered the information on the reseed protocol and what the initial plan was for the arcs and where they track the movements of the Titan as well. But I wanted to go over some of my thoughts and speculations and elaborate a little bit more on Aret Prime. But everything I'm about to say is purely speculation, so take it with a pinch of salt. It's top secret. Hey, take off your helmet and I'll think it to you. Okay, here goes. Upon release of Extinction, a few of you might remember that the developers had hidden a few little easter eggs about Arit Prime. They did this in the form of banners that used to hang down in the city, and anyone who had a tech helmet could read these banners, and Ark has decided to remove them. You can see still that there is the light where they used to stand, there's the purple and yellow lights where the banners used to admit the information. So this made me dig a little bit deeper as to why Wildcard might have removed them. Amongst all of these messages, there are a few that relate to Arit Prime. They're as follows. Arit Prime is in lockdown. Arit Prime failure to launch. Arit Prime has gone silent. So this got me thinking a little bit further, because in a recent Q&A from the writer Mark Solsig, he said as follows. I've moved on from writing Ark. Extinction was the end of the saga for me. However, the idea of the colony ship and Arit Prime, which are linked, was something I left behind for Wildcard to use in the future if they so desired. So the information in the city that's now been removed by Wildcard saying that Arit Prime has failed to launch has got me thinking even further. As well, if we go through any of the concept art for what the Genesis ship is, the developers always call it the Genesis ship. There is some detail on the side of one of them pointing to the fact that it's a Federation ship. But yep, it's just the Genesis ship. So they're not calling it Arit Prime. So it's my theory that Arit Prime is in fact the destination of where the Genesis ship is heading. And that we may have even already seen Arit Prime in Wildcard's most recent trailer. And on that bombshell, I'm going to leave you guys with a clip of what I believe is our very first look without even knowing it of what Arit Prime is. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see ya.